Piper Ware McNary High School in Kaiser tonight for Valley League Boys Basketball. Joining me in the telecast tonight, Harv Shibothi. Harv, we've both been looking forward to this ball game featuring two of the top players in the Valley League. Absolutely. We have the last year's Valley League Player of the Year, Adam Maston from Sprague, and uh, this year's player who really wants to be the Player of the Year in the league, Sean Kinder from McNary. Important ball game also in terms of the Valley League race. Very much so. Both teams in the hunt of it. Uh, only four teams can go. These two teams have an excellent chance of getting there, but neither one of them can afford a loss at this point. All right, we're looking forward to a great ball game. Glad you could join us on Capital Community Television. We'll be back right after these messages from our sponsors. Support for tonight's program is provided by Izzy's Pizza on River Road North in Kaiser. Izzy's is Pizza and a whole lot more by G.I. Joe's. G.I. Joe's, the sports and auto store with two convenient locations in Salem. Seize the weekend at G.I. Joe's. By Chemeketa Community College. Chemeketa offers a first-class education close to home. For any career goal, get your start at Chemeketa. And by Portland General Electric. PGE, the power to make a difference. In the Sprague Olympians and the McNary Celts. As a member of the Valley League and the Oregon School Activities Association, it's the goal of McNary High School to conduct all athletic events in an atmosphere of good sportsmanship. We ask for your cooperation, displaying respect towards the opposing players, fans, and officials in tonight's game. And now, introducing the starting lineups. First, for the visiting Sprague Olympians. Number 24, a 6'1 junior, Timothy Cronin. Number 32, a 6'5 senior, Adam Maston. Number 34, a 6'1 senior, Joseph Milton. Number 40, a 6'1 junior, Chad Murphy. And number 44, a 6'3 sophomore, Kyle Grove. The Olympians are coached by Steve Maston. And now for your McNary Celtics. Number 10, a 5'10 senior, Brad Wirt. Number 14, a six foot junior, Stephen Copeland. Number 30, a 6'3", senior, Sean Kittner. Number 32, a 6'1", senior, Jeff Slatum. And number 44, a 6'2", junior, Scott Keniston. The Celtics are coached by Mr. Larry Gar. Please rise for the national anthem as played by the McNary Pep Band under the direction of Mr. Doug Hartman. John Piper along with Harv Shibothi at McNary High School in Kaiser and always a great way to start a basketball game with a pep band and McNary with an excellent band program directed by Again, Mr. Tonight's Doug Hart. Ball game is being broadcast. And Harv, we've been waiting for this for a while, a chance to see Sean Kintner and Adam Maston on the same floor. Both of those guys, of course, signing letters of intent to go to Oregon State 
Adam will be playing basketball, but Sean Kentner playing football, but uh, a lot of people think he could play basketball as well. Oh, I agree. Uh, they're jumping again. She said they're right now, John. McNary controlling the tip as Kentner goes high. Brad Wirt running the point position for the McNary Celtics, doing an excellent job, the senior. Real key early on will be whether or not the uh, Oles can shut down Sean's supporting cast. Ball goes out of bounds, a turnover. And the Sprague Olympians wearing the orange uniforms in a tie for fourth place in the Valley League or for that fourth playoff spot as North Salem and Crescent Valley and McNary all tied for first. Well, we saw a turnover on the first possession. That's another big key tonight. Both these teams are capable of playing a ball control ball game and uh, turnovers, if there's a lot of them, then it's really lopsided one way or another could really determine who comes out on top here. The Sprague Olympians come back with a turnover. Now it's McNary's chance one more time. McNary coming off a big win over Crescent Valley as Kittner made a three-pointer to win that ball game. Slatham gets it to Keniston. The ball goes out of bounds and two possessions, two turnovers for McNary. Sprague with one turnover on one possession. So far they've uh, shut down uh, everyone around uh, Kintner and I think that's their intent tonight. Let Sean have his points and uh, they'll control the rest. Sprague Olympians, a very patient team. Not a whole lot of experience on this team other than Adam Maston, Joe Milton. Yeah, last year's Valley League uh, champions uh, graduated a lot of real high quality seniors. You yeah, have Fillmore, uh, Adam Bliss, Aaron Bliss. Adam Maston gets the ball to hang on the rim. The Sprague Olympians up by two, six minutes, 35 seconds to go first period. You're watching the game of the week on Capital Community Television in Salem. Slatham for three, off the iron this time, rebounded by Copeland, but he's going to be called for the foul. I think he went over the back of Maston that time, which you kind of have to do. Adam's got some height on, uh, on Stephen Copeland. Maston listed at six foot five, signed a letter of intent to play basketball at Oregon State University. And the Beavers coming up with a big win last night. Absolutely. Got a big challenge Saturday, though. The McNary Celtics are going to double-team Maston when he has a basketball. Well, they really shut him down the first time they played. Uh, it's the one time uh, I've uh, seen Adam Maston, uh, in essence, controlled by another team's defense. And it looks like that's what they're going to do again tonight. The pass goes right through the hands of Kyle Grove. Grove, a sophomore. A young team, as you mentioned, and Kyle certainly uh, one of those sophomores on this uh, Sprague Olympian team. So the McNary Celtics will try to get on the scoreboard. Five minutes, 27 seconds to go, first period. Copeland with a nice move. And Stephen Copeland takes things into his own hands. Well, we saw him emerge a little bit uh, last week, John. Uh, we, we thought he could be a bigger part of the offense here. And uh, last week, he stepped up against West Albany. Let's see what he does tonight. Maston breaks the press. And Copeland picks up the foul. That's two on Stephen Copeland. That's one thing uh, McNary can't afford. Probably see Rudy, Ricky Rivers pretty soon. Ricky there Ramirez is. coming into the ball game, replacing Copeland. <laughs> Sprague Olympians really pretty much relying entirely on Maston for their offense. And nobody else looks like they're willing to take a shot. Sometimes a sign of the inexperienced players, not a whole bunch of confidence. And as we speak, a nice move to the hoop and the basket for Tim Cronin. Okay. 
and intercepted by Maston. Very good play by Adam. Good job of anticipating that pass. And a nice play by the Sprague Olympians. Cronin gets it to number 40, Chad Murphy, for the easy two. The Olympians leading 6-2 to two with 3 minutes, 40 seconds to go, first period. So far, they've shown a lot of patience, and a uh, big key for them is uh, they're getting high percentage shots, and they're taking advantage of them. Wirt dishes off to Scotty Keniston. Keniston off the glass. Doesn't look like we're in for a high scoring affair tonight, John. And it's really why in a low possession game like this, uh, each trip down is important. Uh, and again, key keys are, are turnovers. You don't want to force any if you, you don't have to. You want to be patient really on both sides. Look for that high percentage shot and then uh, hope that shooting percentage is there tonight. Almost a steal by Kintler. Kintner, pull up by Murphy, misses a shot. Wirt with the rebound. Gets it over to Kintner. Sean cross court to Ramirez. Ramirez with the jumper. Ricky Ramirez ties the ball game six apiece. Two minutes, 32 seconds to go in the first quarter. McNary got the ball down the floor very quickly that time. You can tell they want to speed it up uh, if they can. Blocked by Kidner. Another dimension of Sean's game demonstrated right there. Sean Kidner, an all-around player. We've watched him as a scorer, a passer, a rebounder, a defender. And foul will go against the Olympians. On Cronin, I believe. 24 is Tim Cronin picks up the foul and a couple of substitutions for the Celtics. Bryce Bolander, number 54, into the ball game. And also, I think number 20 came in, Coburn. In for the Sprague Olympians, number 20 is Ryan Peterson. Ryan shown the ability to score in some of the ball games so far this year. Nice move by Ricky Ramirez. Ricky's given uh, some valuable minutes coming off the bench. The Celtics with a two-point advantage. One minute, 35 seconds to go. First quarter inside to Maston. He's fouled. Well, you're right. That whole defense rotated to Maston. As soon as he got the ball inside, there was not two, but three orange shirts around him. Bolander picks up the foul. Coming in for the Sprague Olympians, number 12 is Kevin Danielson. Getting to see some of those young players for Sprague that we talked about. Maston. Don't think you can leave him open that long. Three-pointer by Adam Maston puts the Olympians on top by one. Our score, one minute, 18 seconds to go. Sprague nine, McNary eight. We're in the first quarter at McNary High School in Kaiser. Shot is blocked. Slatham with the rebound misses. Jeff had a nice rebound position, put the ball right back up, but couldn't convert. This is one of those nights you like to have that kind of shot back again, John. You really do want to take advantage of every opportunity you have close to the hoop. Twenty six seconds to go first quarter. The Sprague Olympians with a one point lead. Cronin might want to wake up out there. Ball tipped away by Kintner but it will be Sprague's basketball as coach Steve Maston's team will go for the last shot of the first quarter.
Six seconds to go. They may not get that shot off, John. Mastin is fouled by Kintner. And Sean Kintner, we watched in the game of the week last week against West Albany, got in foul trouble with a couple of somewhat questionable fouls. That put him on the bench. Otherwise, he might have set the career scoring record for McNary in that ball game. Yeah, that was one of those ball games, John, where he had a couple of fouls on him, didn't look like he was in trouble. And wow, look at that play. A great way to finish the first quarter as Mastin lobs it in to Kyle Grove. Grove puts it in the bucket. Our score after one quarter, the Sprague Olympians 11, the McNary Celtics 8, and a very nice play to end that first quarter by the Sprague Olympians. Very much so. Took advantage of an inbounds play. Had a man wide open, which is kind of unusual uh, when you get the ball in that kind of position, but I think a good screen set that up uh, and an easy two. Nice job by the sophomore, Kyle Grove, recognizing he had to get the ball up quickly. There's Larry Gar, the McNary coach, talking with his team. McNary coming off that big win over Crescent Valley by a score of 56 to 54 as Sean Kintner scored the three-pointer there in the last few seconds of the ball game. And the Sprague Olympians, of course, it's been the Adam Mastin show this year. Everyone expected that. Uh, Sprague... Let's see if we can catch that uh, shot we just talked about. There was only two seconds on the clock here. Watch the uh, orange shirts. Uh, we're looking for Kyle Grove on this. See the screen underneath the left Kyle open right in the middle of the key. Double screen on each side. Three-point margin for the Sprague Olympians. Second period just underway here at McNary High School. Cronin left open but did not even think about the shot. Mastin with a turnaround. A nice pass from Kyle Grove to Mastin. Well, one thing we know for sure is Adam Mastin can shoot the basketball. One of the best pure shooters we've seen in the Valley League for a long time. Bolander with a nice pass from Ricky Ramirez. That was one actually, uh, the way they were playing the zone, that was Adam's man. Ricky Ramirez picks up the foul. Our score with seven minutes, eight seconds to go. Sprague 13 and McNary 10. Now that's a tough assignment to guard Adam Mastin. Oh, it really is. Copeland already out of the ball game with two quick fouls. Yeah, foul situation interesting here, John. Uh, five already for Sprague, only one, or the other way around. Five for McNary, only one for Sprague. Kittner got a hand on it, but Kyle Grove still put it in the bucket, and he's an outstanding sophomore player for the Olympians. Yeah, he is. He got a lot of varsity uh, uh, time, a lot of a cleanup time last year, but still to play on a, a state contender like he did uh, as a freshman, really valuable. What a play by Kittner. He took the pass away, then the right of the pass inside to Bolander. Nice Bolander, excellent position, but obviously, as you say, John, Kittner just wrestling the ball away. Uh, that was the key to that play. What's happening though is Bryce Bolander is beginning to, to show some hands now. That was one of the concerns earlier in the season. He was uh, not handling that ball in at the post all that well and uh, he's turned that around. A three point margin for the Sprague Olympians. Five minutes, 53 seconds to go in the first half. Joe Milton will not stay. Bolander with the rebound out to Kittner quickly. Ball knocked away by Milton. And has Sean taken a shot yet? Boy, uh, I don't show anything here in the scorecard for him having done so. That, that may, uh, may hurt the average a little bit here, John. I don't think he's been under uh, 20 points all season. Brad Word dumps it off to Slatham. 
Slatton really a key for this McNary team as well as Kittner, of course. Yeah, in terms of scoring, uh, they need, uh, especially on a night by when Kintner's not scoring, somebody needs to step up for McNary, and uh, uh, Jeff Slatham certainly has that ability. One of the other seniors in this starting lineup. Kyle Grove with a short jumper. Kyle with a very quick start, six points now for Kyle. Ramirez tries to get it into Kittner, tipped off his hands and out of bounds. Tried to thread the needle and uh, just a few many, too many hands to get the ball through. Into the ball game, number 40 is Shiloh Rowland, a sophomore for McNary, and also back in Stephen Copeland picked up a couple of quick fouls. The Sprague Olympians doing an excellent job so far on Sean Kittner. Yeah, and the Ollies only have one foul at this point. Impressive uh, four minutes into the second quarter. You mentioned Shiloh Rowland, John. He uh, uh, was in double digits, looked uh, fairly impressive against West Albany last week. You're going to tell me a lot of people look impressive against West Albany. West Albany is good for your scoring average, that's for sure. Well, they're, they're fun to watch when you play against them. There's a steal. Brad Wirt comes up with a basketball word all the way. <laughs> A one-point ball game, three minutes, 41 seconds to go. Sprague 17 and McNary 16. Well, Brad Wirt doesn't do a lot of scoring for McNary, but he does those little things. Milton is fouled as he takes it to the hoop. Joe, very athletic, uh, was one of the starters uh, on last year's uh, team, uh, one of the two starters back this year. Foul was called on Jeff Slatham. Two shots. At the line is Joe Milton. His first point tonight. Milton with two free throws. Our score, three minutes, 23 seconds to go. Sprague 19 and McNary 16. We're at McNary High School in Kaiser on the CCTV Game of the Week. Slatham for three. Will not stay. And everybody kind of looked at that one. Then it came down to Maston. Well, Adam gets a lot of rebounds. And nice put back there by Ryan Peterson. Got the pass, went up strong, put it in a bucket. And like I said, early in the season, uh, Ryan was one, uh, one of the big scorers for Sprague. Wirt to Slatham. And McNary having some success when Wirt takes it towards the basket, dishes it off. Yeah, he's an excellent point guard, John. Excellent point guard. Dishes it well. Again, just not a big scoring threat, but he does all those little things that make for a successful point guard. Three-point lead for the Sprague Olympians. Two minutes, 18 seconds to go, first half. Timeout, Sprague, our score with two minutes, three seconds to go. Sprague 21, McNary 18. John, when the score stays this low, the, the one danger uh, for really for, for both teams, we've talked about each possession being important, but uh, one of the difficulties when you play this style of game, you really don't pull away from your opponents. Uh, and for the team in the lead uh, at this point, uh, uh, that's not a real safe lead by, by any means. Uh, two, two baskets turns this game around in a hurry. And you have to think that Sean Kintner is going to explode here sometime. Well, you would wonder. We're still waiting for his first two points tonight. The leading scorer in the Valley League. But credit the uh, Sprague Olympians. Their defense has been very strong tonight. 
Uh, it breaks down just a little bit when it's challenged by work. Dangerous pass by the Olympians. They managed to manage to hang on to the basketball. Maston with a jumper. Yes. Maston making the adjustment. Adam has nine points now. Certainly winning the scoring battle tonight with uh, with Sean Kidner. Now it's McNary showing the patience. Well, White Shirts looking for a whistle, didn't get it. No whistle, and the Sprague Olympians coming up with the basketball. 41 seconds to go, first half. They're going to hang on to it for a while, look for that last shot. John, I don't show number 10 in our varsity roster. I think that might be uh, Nick uh, Siebel from the uh, up from the JV squad. We'll check that out at halftime. Nine seconds to go. Maston with the basketball. Maston with a jumper. Yes. He's been really uh, shooting well tonight, John. Really well. Adam Maston closes out the first half for the Sprague Olympians. Our halftime score, Sprague 25 and McNary 18. And a good first half, especially for the Sprague Olympians. Not too bad of a half, really, for the McNary Celtics, considering the slowdown style. We'll be back right after these messages from our sponsors. Support for tonight's program is provided by Izzy's Pizza on River Road North in Kaiser. Izzy's is pizza, and a whole lot more. By G.I. Joe's. G.I. Joe's, the sports and auto store with two convenient locations in Salem. Seize a weekend at G.I. Joe's. By Chemeketa Community College. Chemeketa offers a first-class education close to home. For any career goal, get your start at Chemeketa. And by Portland General Electric. PGE, the power to make a difference. Two Salem Kaiser athletes have signed letters of intent to attend Oregon State University. Adam Maston of Sprague and Sean Kidner are those two athletes. Adam will play basketball. Sean will play football. Harv Shibothi talked with Adam Maston and his father and coach. And I talked with McNary football coach Tom Smythe about Sean Kidner. Adam, what went into your decision to choose Oregon State? Um, several things. Um, first, the, the coaching staff, um, great guys, um, the, uh, the the quality players that they recruit, and uh, I think the program's looking up. So, okay. And Oregon State is a university academically. What are some of the things you like there? Um, I'm thinking about business. So um, you know, we checked out the program and see what they had. And so I'm looking forward to it. Okay. You still have a whole season of basketball to play at uh, Sprague. What do you think about the oldest chances this year? Oh, I, I, we're pretty young. I think I think it depends on how our uh, younger guys step up this year and, and how they do. But uh, hopefully that we can we can get going and, and put some maturity into those young guys. And uh, I'm sure I'm sure it'll happen. And hopefully we can finish in the top four in the playoffs. Well, from your perspective, what are some of the things that attracted you folks to Oregon State? Well, first of all, I think the coaching staff is superb. Eddie Payne and his coaching staff, um, I think, are not only quality people, but quality coaches. And I think that's evidenced by the type of kids that are getting in at Oregon State. And um, we, we just like what we saw down there. You know, I know he struggled the first couple of years down there um, based on the group of kids that he had when he, when he took the program over. But uh, the last, you know, year and a half or so, I've uh, had a special interest in Oregon State, obviously, and, and uh, kept a pretty close watch on it and they're getting the, the right types of players in there I think and I think you're going to see a, a move by OSU up uh, up the ladder in the in the Pac-10. 
Okay. And what are you, some of the things you think that, that Adam can contribute to their program? Well, they first saw Adam uh, in a summer tournament two years ago at Las Vegas, a uh, BCO tournament, and he was going to be a junior at that time, and he played the two spot. And I think what they liked about him then was his uh, feel for the game. That was the first thing they had talked about, uh, about Adam's game. And uh, the fact that he sees the floor very well and passes the ball very well. Uh, I, I think since then, uh, as they looked at him further, they found out he's a pretty, pretty good offensive player also. He can shoot the ball and create and make some things happen. So um, they seem pretty excited to have him down there. Great. Well, obviously, there are some other things that go into a choice of a university besides USD Athletics. Uh, some of the other things that you found attractive about Oregon State? Well, they have a good business school, and Adam's interested in going into business, so that, that was a, a big impact. And even though a couple years ago he told mom and dad he was going to go as far away from home as possible to go to school, um, I think he decided it wasn't such a bad idea to be fairly close to home um, around friends and family. And, and uh, for that, we are thankful. Sean Kintner, what can you say about a player like that? Everything you say about Sean is, is probably shortchanging him somewhere because it's hard to, it's hard to uh, be as uh, superlative in your comments as, as he is as a player. You get special players like that once in a while. I've had a few in my career that uh, you look at and immediately you know this is a special player. And, and everyone I've had in that category as an athlete has been just a great kid. He's, uh, Sean is a humble kid who uh, has maybe every right to be arrogant and, and flaunt his ability, but he doesn't do that. He's very popular with his teammates. He's very real. He's a very wholesome kid. Sean Kittner, a great receiver, but also made some huge plays for you on defense with some interceptions, causing fumbles, and uh, was really back there in that safety position when you needed him. Well, as, you know, you've talked about our defense being better, and part of it was Sean's ability to roam around there in the secondary, and, and we freed him up a lot, and he was able to make big plays when he needed to, and when we needed to have him do that, uh, he was there. He's been there really for two years in that spot. Piper along with Harv Shabothi and uh, Harv talk about a couple of outstanding athletes and not only that some outstanding young men. Yeah there were really some uh, speaking of outstanding young men uh, in the first half Adam Maston talk about outstanding ball games uh, almost perfect for the field with his shooting uh, and uh, leadership out there. He scored 11 points uh, out of the 25. Of course, we expect him to score a lot, but when your opponent only scores 18, uh, that's really quite an accomplishment. But he was getting good passes in good positions, but the important thing uh, was he converted every single time he had an opportunity. On the other hand, Sean Kittner has been almost non-existent. Well, if I told you that Brad Word had two and Copeland had two and uh, Ricky had four and uh, Jess Slatum uh, had four, uh, you'd say, well, that sounds about right. And then we'd say, well, who's missing in all this? Because normally at this point, we're used to seeing Sean Kittner in, uh, in double digits by now. He has yet to score tonight, John. Sean Kittner, the key to this McNary team. His teammates are going to have to get him some shots. And they're going to have to shut down the Sprague Olympians. The Olympians, uh, Maston, as you mentioned, the big man in that first half, but also a nice ball game for Kyle Grove. Kyle Grove did step up, just as you say. The, the young sophomore uh, came in, uh, contributed six points. Uh, uh, and, and again, you take his six along with uh, Adam Maston's uh, 11. That's 17. McNary is a team, uh, totaling only 18 at this point. At least from McNary's standpoint, uh, they've had uh, the scoring well spread out, so the other players have stepped up. Slat him into Keniston. Keniston can't get it to go, but he's fouled by Kyle Grove. He'll go to the line. Scotty Keniston, a very aggressive player. He makes up uh, in maybe lack of uh, uh, ability, just in pure, pure hustle. I've never seen anyone uh, go after the ball, sacrifice his body the way Scott does. Free throw is very important in this ball game, as yeah, we, it will be a low-scoring game. We talked about that. Each shot, each trip important. Keniston misses both. Kittner almost over the back, but gets the rebound as it's batted around by his teammates. Sean Kittner on the board. His first points come at the start of the second half. 
Kittner guarding Maston. My goodness. Oh, talk boy. Talk about athletic move. One-handed shot. And he now has 13. Wirt dishes it off to Keniston, has to send it back out to Slatham. Will not stay. Keniston saves the ball over to Slatham. Kittner with a jumper off the iron this time. Another rebound, and Slatham comes up with the offensive rebound, puts up the shot. He's fouled. He'll go to the line, and Jeff Slatham stepping up for the McNary Celtics. They trail by seven. Seven minutes, five seconds to go. Sprague 27, McNary 20. Definitely trying to pick up the tempo of the game now are the McNary Celtics. You can tell their intensity, their quickness. Uh, they're really trying to get to the hoop. McNary struggling at the free throw line. Slatham finally gets one to go. A six point ball game, seven minutes, four seconds to go. Third quarter, Sprague 27, McNary 21. First free throw to successfully be made by McNary tonight. Sprague has only missed, uh, or only made two, so not too many points from the charity stripe so far. Nice pass inside to Joe Milton, and he was fouled by Keniston as Keniston kind of got a little out of position there and bumped into Milton. Yeah, excellent pass into Joe Milton. Uh, he was a little bit too far underneath to really put up the ball the way he wanted to. Uh, but he will not get a chance to uh, convert two free throws. I think it sees McNary rims hard. We were here last week with West Albany. Nobody <laughs> could make a free throw. Yeah, and it's kind of been that same way tonight, John. Milton with one for two back up to a seven point lead for the Sprague Olympians. And the Celtics have switched Sean Kintner on to Adam Maston. Slatham with a nice move, will not stay. Maston with the rebound. We got a three on two brewing here. Maston with the spin move. Adam Maston putting on a show. Now he was our sales sports and breakfast club athlete of the week. I don't think we jinxed him. <laughs> Tim Cronin will pick up the foul for the Olympians. Interesting to see how many football players we have here on the floor. Of course, almost the entire McNary basketball team also played on that state championship football team for the Sprague side. Tim Cronin played for the Sprague Olympian football team. Maybe a little cause of concern for uh, Coach Steve Maston. That was the third foul. Third foul uh, on Tim Cronin. Danielson charged with the foul as the Sprague Olympians trying to keep Sean Kintner out of the paint. Kittner with the shot. Nice inbound play. And the McNary Celtics starting to come alive here in this come to life here in this third quarter. Six minutes, four seconds to go. Sprague 30 and McNary 23. Sean Kittner with four points now. Yeah. Well, we talked about it. McNary uh, hitting the uh, boards much harder now, not showing the patience they were in the first half. They're going to the hoop every opportunity they can get. Trying to pick up the tempo of this game. Cronin misses the shot. Slat him inside to Keniston. Keniston gets it to go. He's fouled. He'll go to the line. Another factor could be the McNary crowd. They're starting to come to life. Yeah, they are. They were very, very quiet in the first half. But again, McNary going to the hoop strong. Scott Keniston, linebacker and receiver for the McNary Celtic football team, but the free throws just are not coming tonight. Well, so far, every time uh, McNary has scored in this half, uh, Adam Maston has seemed to have an answer. Turnover for the Olympians as Grove was unable to handle the pass a little bit high. But Grove comes right back and intercepts the pass. 
Makes up for the turnover by stealing it right back. Actually, the pass in from Adam Baston really had a lot of velocity on it. I can understand why Kyle Grove had trouble handling that one. Knocked away by Keniston, gets it over to Slatham. Slatham with the jumper, gets it to go. A three-point ball game, four minutes, 25 seconds to go. Sprague 30, McNary 27, and the turnovers are starting to hurt the Sprague Olympians. Well, we talked about that at the very outset, that that would be a real key tonight. Maston lobs the pass inside to Number 20, Ryan Peterson. Peterson fouled. He'll go to the line. Well, Scott Keniston playing the only way he knows how, John. That's all out. Yeah, Ryan Peterson doesn't have any problem with the rim. Ryan's now has three points for the evening. Make it four. He's got a good shooting touch, too, just like Adam Aston. Work for three. Off the marks. Coming up with a rebound. Number 54, I believe, is Swanicut. I don't have him on the roster here. A couple players, I'm sure, up from the JVs, John. Varsity roster only listing nine, uh, and they're deeper than that on that bench tonight. Peterson with a jumper. Nice move by Peterson. He's capable of doing this, John. He was relatively quiet in the first half. Didn't start tonight, but coming on here in the third quarter. The lead back up to seven for the Olympians. Three minutes, 15 seconds to go, third quarter. Now, oh, I believe on Joe Milton. Milton picks up the foul, and the Olympians are picking up quite a few fouls in this half compared with the first half. Already their 16 foul. And most of those coming trying to contain Sean Kintner. Kintner with a nice move. Beautiful pass to Bolander. Sean Kintner is a complete basketball player. Very much so. You mentioned that foul situation, John. It's just a total flip of the first half when it was uh, five fouls to one the other way. This time it's six to two. Uh, and McNary may very well be able to take advantage of a bonus situation not too, not too much further from now. Maston for three, blocked by Kidner. Peterson comes up with it. Maston, the floor leader on this team, the leading scorer. Probably a leading rebounder, assist man. <laughs> He's got it all. Yeah. Like Sean Kidner, good all around player. Excellent pass. Peterson misses the easy shot as all the McNary Celtics stop. Brad Wirt turns it over, but I think on that last possession, all the Celtics thought that Maston was going to be called for traveling. They all stopped, and Peterson was camped under the basket with about a one-footer and missed it. Yeah, missed it. We talked about the fact that you, this is the kind of evening you don't want to miss those easy opportunities. That is definitely one I'd love to have back. Now he'll be able to watch it again on CCTV. Well, he's only a sophomore also. Um, Ryan Peterson, Kyle Grove, two sophomores playing an awful lot of ball this year. As you mentioned, uh, John, this Sprague team is a relatively young team in uh, most of their positions.
Sprague Olympians slowing things down definitely to their advantage in this ball game. Very much so. McNary, when they have gotten the ball, has tried to pick up the tempo, but they haven't disrupted uh, the Sprague offensive game plan, which for Sprague is to take as much time off the clock as they can. They're going to try to milk this lead. Five-point advantage for the Sprague Olympians. Under one minute to go, third period. They led by seven at the half, 25 to 18. Well, the shout of boring comes up from the McNary fans. Doesn't seem to phase the Olympians. <laughs> and these are the times when it is too bad there is not a shot clock in high school basketball. Yeah, we used to have this kind of situation occur in uh, collegiate basketball, and they finally did have to change that rule. Grabbed that time by Sean Kintner. Kittner saw Maston getting away from him and he reached out and grabbed him. Said I have a foul to give. Not a bad play by uh, Sean Kittner because now Sprague's got to get the ball up in three seconds. So it's got to be pass catching up and that's not going to be easy to do. Especially when you step on the line. The Sprague Olympians turn it over with three seconds to go in the third quarter. McNary, however, will have to go the length of the court in three seconds. Adam's probably saying, don't show that one to Eddie Payne. And that is one long three seconds. But in any case, after three quarters, our score, the Sprague Olympians 34, and the McNary Celtics 29. The McNary Celtics only able to cut that lead down by two points. They trailed by seven at the half, now trail by five. And they got off to a pretty good start, Harv, in that third quarter. But once again, the Sprague Olympians with Adam Maston running the show, able to really maintain that lead, and McNary not able to gain on them. Well, McNary tried to force the issue, just as you said, John. Uh, when they got uh, into their flow of their offense, uh, every opportunity they were bringing the ball down the floor as rapidly as they could, tried to score quickly, sometimes didn't take the best of shots under those circumstances. Uh, but uh, credit the Olympians, uh, they did not get into that kind of ball game. They uh, hung tough uh, and continued to play the style that uh, they believe they have to play to be able to stay with this McNary team. Sprague Olympians coming into tonight's ball game with a six and five record tied with Lebanon and South Salem. On the other hand, the McNary Celtics nine and two tied with Crescent Valley and North Salem. And that North Salem basketball program is definitely on the way up. And a lot of that has to do with Chuck Robinson going with those young players two years ago and getting them the experience you need to compete in the Valley League. Yeah, he did do that. You remember uh, he played, I think, three freshmen at a time and uh, perhaps took some criticism for doing it that year. But uh, uh, now North Salem seeing the payoff for that experience, just as you indicated. Big game, really, tonight for, for Sprague, yeah. Great play by the Olympians as Maston goes up, banks it off the glass on the lob pass. Kinder was right there. Maston got up in the air. Three-point attempt by Copeland will not stay. Rebounded by Joe Milton. Unfortunately, when the, uh, you got a game like this, uh, John, where Sprague is trying to uh, conserve the time on the clock and uh, make that clock go, you can't always afford to take that three-point shot and get yourself back in the ball game. Shoot a few of those. Uh, Unfortunately, you lose another minute of the clock. But Sprague really needs this one more than McNary does, John. They're uh, being uh, three games down uh, right now in the standings. Uh, they lose tonight. Uh, it puts them four games down behind McNary with uh, less than half a season to go. That would be real tough to get back into contention. Sprague doing a good job handling the basketball. Yeah, see, this is the problem. Copeland puts up the three-point shot, misses, and as we say, there's going to be another minute off the clock by the time this is all through. And they might be behind even further. Milton called for five seconds. 
Well, you can take time off the clock, John. You just can't hold the ball. <laughs> but it's going to be difficult for the McNary Celtics to overcome that lead. Well, they, they can't rush it. What they have to do, John, is to, uh, to try to get some high percentage shots. They've got a distinct height advantage uh, if uh, they use both Bolander uh, and Kintner uh, on the Sprague side, uh, the primary height actually resides in Matson, and he's obviously not going to be able to handle both those uh, players. I think it's a situation uh, we saw the uh, ability last week of McNary to pass the ball. Uh, they have to still show a little bit of patience uh, in terms of not rushing the shot, use their passing, use their athleticism, uh, and get high percentage shots. They can get themselves right back in it. Glad you could join us on Capital Community Television. John Piper along with Harv Shabothi. And hopefully you'll stay with us for the rest of the Valley League season. Exciting basketball ahead. And also a couple of uh, other programs coming up. The Valley League Swimming Championships will be this month. And also the Valley League Wrestling Championships. And Harv, you had an opportunity last year to watch the wrestling championships. That's some pretty exciting stuff when they get down to the district meet. Oh, it really is. And, uh, you know, the competition for third and fourth place uh, is, is so crucial uh, at that uh, district meet because uh, the fourth place wrestler doesn't get a chance to go on to uh, play wrestle in that, that state meet. So it's uh, do or die by the time they get down to that uh, third and fourth spot. Copeland misses a shot. Roland with the rebound gets it out to Slatham. Back inside to Roland. He's fouled by Kyle Grove. That time uh, McNary did take a higher percentage shot. Didn't make it, uh, but they were shooting uh, from well within their range. That's the seventh team foul on Sprague, so it'll be a shooting opportunity for Roland. And from McNary's standpoint, a nice thing about this situation is that clock stops. Got to make those free throws. And that's one thing they haven't done a great deal of tonight. I don't know what it is about free throws at this gym, but nobody can seem to shoot a clean free throw. Grove with a nice block out and the rebound. Nope, I tell you, the only ones that really look clean tonight, Ryan Peterson uh, had a couple down at the other end, but you're right, uh, they've been banging on that rim and uh, uh, springing right off. They did last week, too. Kittner going up against Maston. Another turnover for the Olympians. Not something they can really afford right now. But the Celtics have got to capitalize. And again, get that high percentage shot. Cross court to Copeland. Copeland off the mark, hits the side of the basket. Roland tries to get the basketball and he's fouled. And a one and one opportunity for Roland. Good hustle by Sprague, but uh, a little bit too much body. And uh, Shiloh Roland with a chance to get uh, two important free throws here. Five minutes, 34 seconds to go in our ball game. Sprague 36, McNary 30. The free throw is extremely critical as every possession so important when the Sprague Olympians are slowing things down. Into the ball game, number 40 is Chad Murphy for the Olympians. Shiloh Rowland, the sophomore. And we talked about the young sophomores on Sprague's side. Uh, we've got some young talent this McNary side too. One more free throw for Roland. Good crowd on hand here tonight at McNary High School. We want to thank Mike McGann for all his assistance. He's the athletic director. Roland with one for two and rebounded by Maston. He's down in San Diego this uh, weekend, John. He told me he'd love to be here, but he's going to get a chance to see his boyhood idol, Ted Williams, this weekend. <laughs> Big event for Mike. Timeout, our score with... Five minutes, 27 seconds to go. Sprague 36 and McNary 31. And the free throws, they just aren't going down. Well, they aren't. And when you look at this uh, five-point margin and uh, consider that uh, they could have made those uh, points up by making, uh, of course, they would have had to make all their free throws. But had they done so, they could have a tie ball game right now. 
The Sprague Olympians have done an excellent job containing Sean Kintner. Kintner coming in here averaging, I think, about 27 points per game tonight. Nowhere near that. He no, hasn't he's got, got four, John. He hasn't had the opportunities. No, he hasn't. And uh, yeah, what they've done, uh, uh, Sprague has kind of uh, packed the paint. Uh, and uh, Sean uh, loves to operate in there, but it's pretty hard to get a pass through uh, four or five bodies, and that's what uh, McNary has been confronted with. Big uh, possessions coming up now for Sprague. The last two times down, they tried to take uh, time off the clock, uh, and on both occasions uh, did succeed in taking time off, but you want to take time off the clock and uh, get some kind of offensive shot up and some offensive play, and they didn't do that either the last two times down. Stolen by Copeland, gets it over to Kittner, back to Copeland. And McNary showing the patience, this is what they need. They'll get an open shot if they keep working it. They've shown us that ability to pass and work it. Ball knocked away and out of bounds, it will be McNary's basketball. Again, almost threw it away, wanted to get it to, uh, to Kittner, and uh, tonight may just be one of those nights you've got to rely on some other people. Sean may just not be able to get those open shots. Kittner with the jumper off the mark this time. Rebound by Slatham. Slatham is fouled. He'll go to the line. Fouls on Adam Aston. Grove called for the foul. Again, I, I'm not sure. You know, McNary again tried to get the ball to uh, to Kintner. Kintner had had a halfway decent look, but it's kind of like we're going to force it in there one way or another uh, so Sean can take the shot. There's other people out there who can do the job, including the man at the free throw line. Jeff Slatham with one more free throw. The foul situation really a factor here as the Sprague Olympians with 19 fouls. The next foul will be double bonus time. McNary only three team fouls here in the second half. Well, the price Sprague uh, has uh, paid for shutting down Kintner has been to pick up an awful lot of fouls here in the second half. It's been a pretty good trade-off, though, because McNary hasn't shot the free throws very well. Stolen by Kintner, out ahead to Copeland. Copeland lays it in. We've got a one-point ball game, Harv. Well, what's happening here, John, is uh, McNary is basically shutting down Adams' uh, supporting pass, and Adam uh, is trying to get the job done by himself, but he's just not able to do it. Milton loses the basketball, and McNary with an opportunity to take the lead here with three minutes, 57 seconds to go. They trail by one, 36 to 35. McNary fans on their feet, really for the first time tonight. Slatham for three, will not stay, rebounded by Mastin. Boy, if that one would have gone, the crowd would have erupted. Adam Mastin with kind of a frustrated look on his face. Well, uh, to be honest, uh, a lot of the Sprague players do. Joe Milton, uh, Adam's father Steve, uh, both very unhappy with uh, that uh, last turnover. Thought a foul should be called. In fact, their bench is still hollering at the referees. And I think they're also unhappy on that rebound. Maston was kind of smacked on it. No foul there, but so you got to remember you're playing at McNary High School well, here in Kaiser. Exactly right. I mean, it's. Uh, there is uh, that home court advantage. I don't care where you're playing. Uh, as uh, neutral as the referees to, uh, try to be, uh, the crowd does have an influence. Uh, I think that's everywhere in basketball. And a great crowd they have here at McNary High School. Great band. It's a real nice facility here. Yeah. Well, McNary supports its teams. There's no question about that. Uh, and all the Salem schools really do, and I, I'm, I'm proud to say that. But uh, uh, especially up here in Kaiser, uh, McNary uh, fans are behind their team all the way. Roland picks up the foul, but it's only the fourth team foul on the Celtics. Coming back into the ball game for the Sprague Olympians, number 44 is Kyle Grove. Ball, 
Maston tried to dish it, but there was Slatham, got a hand on the ball, knocked it out of bounds. Well, right now we've got a situation where we, we talk about inexperience on the, on the floor. Uh, of course, at this time of the season, they're, they're not inexperienced anymore, but uh, I see two sophomores out there. Roland knocks the ball off number 40, Chad Murphy, and it's McNary basketball again. Can the Celtics convert this time? They've had their opportunities. Three minutes, 28 seconds to go. Sprague 36, McNary 35. One more time, McNary has a chance to take the lead. Copeland tries to lob it inside. It's taken away by Maston. That inside pass, this isn't there. Blocking foul as Maston takes it to the hoop. It's going to go against Brad Wirt. Wirt. Mary fans don't like that call. Now Brad looking for the charge. Let's see if we can catch it here, John. Let's watch uh, Brad Wirt in the paint, in the blue. Is he planted? Oh, I would say so. That's always one of the hardest calls though in basketball, John. Is it a block, is it a charge? And that play, uh, in fairness to the officials, tends to be bang, bang. One for two for Maston. Sprague 37, McNary 35. Three minutes, eight seconds to go. The Celtics have had their chances. They've been unable to score here. Patience get the good shot, they can do it. There is a wide open shot there. Slatham. Strong rebound, McNary. And stolen by Joe Milton. Copeland had the basketball. Milton took it away from him. He really did. Joe Milton, quite an athlete, doesn't score a whole bunch, but uh, he does so many other things on the court. Reminds me an awful lot of Worth. Senior leadership from Joe Milton. Milton with a jumper. Oh, sometimes he does score. A four point margin, two minutes, 14 seconds to go. Sprague 39, McNary 35. For Joe Milton, only six points tonight, but boy, none bigger than that one. Make that five points tonight, but none bigger than that. Milton picks up the foul and to the free throw line goes Sean Kintner. Two shots now as Sprague is in the double bonus situation. Sean Kintner, four points. Who would have ever thought? Coming back into the ball game, number 24, Tim Cronin for the Sprague Olympians and coming in for the McNary Celtics. Number 22 is Ricky Ramirez. Coach Larry Gar has kept Bolander on the bench for quite a while. He had a pretty nice first half. Kittner too strong, re rebounded by Ramirez. Kittner for three, will not stay. Maston with the rebound, loses the basketball, gets it back as he hits the deck. The interesting thing, uh, McNary wants a travel call of that, but you know he was dribbling all that time. <laughs> And I think that's the situation. Now he almost turns it over. He's fouled by Brad Worth. That's the 15th foul on McNary. Correction, that is the 16th foul. One more will put Sprague in the one and one situation. One minute, 41 seconds to go. The Sprague Olympians leading by three. Big possession here by Sprague. 